You're listening to a podcast from The Word. Word down your way. It's safe to go back in the water. Welcome to another Word down your way and to another musician who's about to go out on tour, the excellent Mark Everett, better known as E from the band Eels. E, very nice to talk to you. And you're in Los Angeles, right? That's correct. Which is, I think, where you were born. No, I was born in Washington, D.C. Oh, Washington, D.C. In Virginia. Sorry. Oh, right. I always thought you were born out there. So we just wanted to, you're going on tour March, April, and we were just going to ask you about, you know, um, first memories of shows that you saw yourself. I mean, can you remember who did some of the first yeah. gigs you went to? Well, I was very lucky because I had a sister who was six years older than me, uh, who was a big music fan and, and took me to a lot of big concerts. And my The very first concert I ever went to was when I was about 11, she took me to a George Harrison concert. Oh, right. Fantastic. So yeah. what? when was that? 1974. Oh, really? Okay. Can you remember what he played? Oh, yeah. I remember what he looked well. like. Yeah, I remember the whole thing. It, it, it was his only American tour ever. Yes. And, um, you know, it got bad reviews because his voice was all ragged out and i think he was going through like a cocaine phase or something yeah um, he was in that very but, skinny phase wasn't he and he kept yeah, losing yeah. his voice there's lots of film of him taking some kind of uh whiskey and lemon and lemon juice uh yeah uh, but i mean ocean. it was my it wasn't just my first time seeing a beetle it was my first time seeing any rock concert and hearing that big sound and being in that arena and i couldn't have loved it more it was so exciting right and there were some unusual uh, moments in the set list. He he uh, did in my life, which is a John song, of course. Yes, and then, cool. yes yeah, yeah, yeah. And Billy Preston was there and did did some of his songs. And you know, they even there was even a moment where they danced together. It was fantastic. <laughs> That's incredible! What an amazing thing to be in your first show. That's incredible. <laughs> and it was it was the day that George visited the White House in the afternoon. Oh, of course. Oh, Lord, yes. Because he was he was a, he palled up with Gerald Ford's son, hadn't he? Or yeah, like that. yeah. He was a fan, and he just invited him. And I guess George was like, oh, what the heck. Right. <laughs> so the, your first gig was at, you know, large scale. Yeah. Right. Okay. Did you subsequently go to start going to smaller ones locally or who do you, who else yeah. do you remember seeing? Well, we were, you know, I grew up in the suburbs of Virginia and it was, it was pretty much an arena show or nothing for a while. Oh, really? It, it, you know, uh, and I saw some amazing ones. I saw the who with Keith Moon and uh, the, Russ Never Sleeps, Neil Young show, just so many amazing shows that my sister took me to. And it wasn't until like my teens at some point where I started sneaking into clubs that I was too young to be in. You right. know? And, and that, that was a whole nother thrill seeing. And what kind of people were you seeing then? Uh, you know, there, there was a, a, a club in, in Washington, D.C. called The Bayou uh, that a uh, a guy that played guitar who was a little older than me that, that we had a little band uh he would take me to and i'd sneak in with like a fake id or something and and uh a lot of times it was just like local bar bands and, which was exciting though to you know see music on a small scale and sometimes it would be like bands that you'd heard of that were big once that were on their way down like i remember going to see steppenwolf at the oh, fantastic. Point. You know, but this is probably like the early 80s at this point. So, uh, but most of the time it was just like little local bar bands. So do you remember seeing anybody at that particular stage who made you feel like um, you wanted to get on stage yourself, that you wanted to become a performer? Yes. Uh, a big one for me, uh, speaking of someone who was huge, who was playing stadiums a few years earlier, but was on their way down at this point, it was Leon Russell. Oh, who, yes, fantastic. Who was always playing at some small clubs in Virginia or Maryland or D.C., including the Bayou. And I went, the first time I saw him was actually, he played at a racetrack in Maryland at an afternoon matinee. And... um I just thought, oh, you know, I used to like his music and uh, I'm going to go check it out. It was, you know, early 80s and there was nobody there, which is a 
afternoon matinee. And I learned a great lesson that day. Despite the fact that there was nobody there and it must have been so depressing for him to be playing at a an afternoon race track. It was like an arts and crafts fair held at a race yeah, track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And it was extremely sparsely attended. And it didn't matter. He came out and just put on an unbelievable show. Like it just blew my mind how good it was, like with this like gospel fervor. And I've never forgotten that. So, you know, anytime I have a a bad night, we all have, you know, sparsely attended moments in our careers. And I I always give it my all. And the funny thing that, that's happened for me with that is I've had several instances of a fan stopping me on the street and telling me that they were at one of those yes. sparsely attended shows and that it like changed their life, like the way the Leon thing did for me. So it's, uh, I'm paying it for. Well, they were probably feeling what you were feeling, which is the, the, how wonderful it was that someone was making such an effort when there were so few people there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and the other amazing thing is often it turns out to be someone who goes on to become like a famous artist or actor yes. that's telling me this. So, like, you really don't know who you're influencing. And in, you no. in, in, yes, in, people bring take your game. what people, a responsibility. People take yeah. great, great pride in having been at shows where there weren't many people. Yeah. They always remember. They think, yeah. well, at least yeah. I was the person who bothered to turn up. It indicates yeah. a level of dedication, yes. doesn't it? Loyalty. Yeah. 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 In the same way that people tend to hate groups when they kind of, when they get big, because yes. they can't bear to share them with right. 10,000 right. other people, you know, it's perfectly right. natural. Yeah. yeah. Well, luckily that never happens with us. Right. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> So you're you're about to uh, tour, well, the whole of Europe, I think. Is that right? The UK first, the first bit, is that right? Yeah. Uh, yes, we're starting in the UK and then, you know, most of the other places. And, well, what's the uh, what's the kind of setup this time? And, you know, who's, who are you bringing with you and what kind of show can people look forward to? Well, we're just starting to put that together. Um, it's going to be the same lineup as the last time, which was me and the Chet on guitar and Big Al on bass and Little Joe on drums. But uh, I'm hoping to do, I mean, we, we've we put out two new albums since the last time we toured. So we've got a lot of those songs to choose from. And I also want to do some songs that we haven't played in a long time or or maybe never have in some cases. So it's going to be pretty easy to fill out the set list this time with so much. Can you give us some clues as to which songs they'd be? No. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Like, once again, like my favorite element when I, as a concert goer, is the element of surprise. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You, know, you know, like, which Leon was the greatest surprise. And, and uh, I like, you know, I... I it gets hard to keep trying to be surprising, but that's that's my favorite element. When I when I went to the Russ Never Sleeps concert, Russ Never Sleeps wasn't a movie or an album yet, and he'd never done something so crazy and theatrical. It was you just thought, oh, it's going to be Neil Young and Crazy Horse, you know, jamming, yeah. and all stoned, and you know the usual, and 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 it was this unbelievable spectacle that blew my mind. You know, that that was another thing that made a big uh, impact on me. So I don't like to, you know, get into spoilers. No, right. fair enough. And what about lyricists? What were the people whose lyrics you just felt particularly inspired well, by? I think the biggest obvious lyricist influence for me and what I ended up doing was John Lennon, uh, particularly the Plastic Ono Band album, which oddly I really embraced when I was 10 years old. And, wow. and uh, yeah, it just like spoke to me. And like, I think that's where I got the whole, let's write, try to write some simple, but intense. That's, that's really, it's what an interesting yeah. one to choose. Why did that particularly speak to you, that record? I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I think if I had a 10 year old kid, I remember my mom was, you know, disturbed that I was singing uh, songs like my mommy's dead in the car. <laughs> 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 she was like, can you sing something else? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I was thinking about what you said about your sister. I think she must have shown great forbearance in taking a brother who was six years younger than her. Along yeah, she, to- was, she was a great sister. She really, like, let me pal around. And, you know, a lot of my identity as a, as a little kid was I was the little kid. Because I was also a really good drummer from, you know, starting from the age of six. And so I was always in bands with, like, high school guys and stuff. And, oh, really? Uh, so I was always like Marky, the cute little kid. Oh, really? Oh, that's great. So you're, then, almost, you're almost a novelty, were you? With I was that? a novelty. And that's what's so weird now about being the old guy. It, like, <laughs> yeah. it's still hard to get used to because that was so ingrained in me to always be the young guy. Really? But now, you, I'm often, now I'm often the old guy in the room. But you used to do kind of drum solos and things like that when you were... Yeah, you were, yeah. You're right. Stop the show, I imagine. It's the- were these covers bands? Were you playing covers? Yeah. What sort yeah. of things were you playing? Um, there was a lot of Southern rock being in Virginia. So there was a lot of, you know, ZZ Top, Leonard Skinner. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Can you still turn your hand to that kind of thing if you if you need to? Well, the the one instrument that I can like sit in with anybody is is drums still, and I recently played at my six year old son's uh, school Christmas concert. I was the drummer. <laughs> that was really fun. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. So, what what's your uh, what's your uh, kind of preparation routine prior to going on tour? I mean, do you spend a lot of time in rehearsal and planning and so forth, or is yes. it right? Okay, yeah, so- we 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 are very serious about rehearsal. We, we rehearse a lot for a, a long time. I think more than a lot of bands, like because I don't want to waste anybody's time. I want to put on a show. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and you. And and you rehearse it as if there's an audience there, do you? So you know, we, we, we timing get to, and so forth. Yeah, we get to that point where you know by the end of it, we're running sets and yeah, and timing it and and trying to make it as much like it's going to be as possible. Do how you, much do you change it then when you think it, if you think it isn't working? I mean, how much do you? Yeah, do you, yeah, it's always fluid. You know, like after the first show in particular, you'd be like, well, that didn't work and let's try this here and you move stuff around and all that so when you're on tour do you presumably all gigs are recorded well everything's recorded nowadays i mean do you do you listen back to that stuff and think no we should move that from fifth number to tenth or whatever do you do you i don't listen back occasionally i'll i'll check some of the youtubes that fans put out to get an idea of Right, you know, like what the lights are looking like, or whatever stuff that I can't tell from the stage, you know. And I suppose also you're seeing their feedback, aren't you? Presumably online, is that right? While the tour's going on, yeah, you can hear them, you know, like talking to their friend, like, Oh, I hate this song. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could actually hear that, that's brilliant. <laughs> I'm very depressing. <laughs> no, it's. I think it's usually more favorable than that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, where, where are you particularly looking forward to to playing on this uh, on this upcoming tour? Or have you even uh, looked? Have you looked yet? <laughs> well, we're start. We're starting in um, Nottingham, which we always enjoy, and then the second night is London, which we always enjoy. Uh, yeah, the uh, Roundhouse, I think, in London. I yeah, which we, and we've never played the Roundhouse before. Right. Or, you know. um, looking forward to both of those. I, I wish we had a chance to do a warm-up or two before. <laughs> so it's a little crazy to be doing London on the second night. You know? Oh, I see, yes. <laughs> so our, our, our London audiences are always meant to be traditionally quite different. The London audiences are meant to be very kind of arms folded, come on, impress me. Is that the yeah, case, do you think? That, that's what people often say, but we don't... It, I don't remember ever getting that. Maybe maybe once or twice a long time ago, but we always get really like enthusiastic London audiences. Okay. Well, you bring the Roundhouse, which is uh, of course famously where well the Rolling Stones played the Roundhouse, the Doors played Ramones the Ramones played the Roundhouse. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
Just yeah, pretty much like every rock biography I've read mentions, you know, whoever it's about playing at the Roundhouse. The, the Roundhouse. It wasn't yeah. open for that long. For, for years it was closed down, not at all. It wasn't used at all. But it's a, oh. you, you might, Have you been in there? It was a former engine turning shed for a Victorian structure. Oh, it's, it's a incredible building. Yeah, Fantastic. Yeah. Lovely old iron sort of frame you know, pillars all the way through it. It's just it's very extraordinary. Oh, is that bad for the sight lines? No, it's not. No, bad. it's no, really, no, no, it's no, really good. good incredible, for incredible uh, 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 acoustics as well. It's people, people, place. people like going to the roundhouse. I think, I think yeah. I can say that without fear of contradiction. They, they oh. like that above, uh, above pretty much all London gigs. Yeah, so all I'm right. sure, you, I'm sure you'll enjoy that. Great. Well, we'll, you know, we'll look forward to seeing you in the UK. Starts in the in the end of March, I think. I'm right in saying. Um, that's okay. uh, and then continue and then that's the uk and ireland and uh, and then you go to the continent and uh you know so traditionally say the usual sign off in these circumstances is good luck with the tour <laughs> yeah uh, we say break a string break a string <laughs> very good this podcast was brought to you by the word <laughs> <laughs>